All right, since we've spent so much time talking about currency wars, I thought I'd do a video, which I realized I haven't done a video. I've written plenty about Bitcoin, but I've never done a video on Bitcoin. So what is Bitcoin? Well, the definition is a type of digital currency in which encryption techniques are used to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify the transfer of funds operating independently of a central bank. So it is a payment system and it is also a digital asset which I'm going to touch on uh, in the second half of this video. So it's a digital asset that's what we're going to get to. But this was invented in 2008. It's a peer-to-peer -peer payment system. I mean you come over and put a ceiling fan in my house and I pay you cash that's peer-to-peer -peer, right or you come over and put a ceiling fan in my house and in exchange I do your taxes right so that's peer-to-peer -peer. meaning there is no intermediary unlike everything else in our life that seems to be controlled by what <laughs> by the central banks and we've just done a ton of videos on that exact issue so they use this technology, it's called a blockchain, where it's a bunch of independent computers that are mining to validate the transactions. And what they're doing is they're competing to solve a mathematical puzzle every 10 minutes. And whoever solves the puzzle and clears the transaction is awarded 25 new Bitcoins. And in today's valuation, that's about $11,000. Okay, so before I, I lose you, because this is sounding too much like a Matrix movie, let me, uh, let me put some meat on the bone here. So here are just a handful of retailers that you can buy their product or services with Bitcoin. And folks, it's just a handful, and I picked these specifically, and I'll, I'll, you'll, I'll get to some of these a little bit later. But it, it's almost countless the number of retailers that now accept Bitcoin. From the institutional side... You have Barclays, which is an enormous British bank, has formed a partnership with Bitcoin. This is really being generated by the Britain Treasury because they are determined to have the UK be the world's capital for financial technology. And I believe this is part of this whole negotiating with the exit in the Eurozone. And you can see in this article here, the Financial Conduct Authority has granted an, an e-money license to the social payment app Circle, right? And this is all in connection with uh, Barclays behind this venture. So Circle is a phone app, right? It's a social payment system. They're based out of Boston. And they have raised 76 million dollars in venture capital their largest single investor is Goldman Sachs so so this is not Joe Lunchpail uh, investing in this kind of stuff circles doing some pretty clever stuff with um, allowing you to send written messages with your payment you can send emojis with your payment you can uh, even send videos with your payment and, and this some of the stuff you see this over in China with uh, WeChat Pay and and also Alipay, so this isn't terribly unique uh, in the in the world, but here in the United States and and throughout Europe, Circle is the the first mover in this area. Now, if you've ever been to a retailer that swipes your credit card on their iPhone, right? That's uh, a lot of that is using Stripe. So you can see here if you just go to let, let's say you're a retailer and you use Stripe, so this is what you're using in your store. You can right, see right here that they're promoting Bitcoin. You can come down here and watch this little demo. I'll just let it run. So it's promoting you to start using Bitcoin. And all you have to do is just sign in, connect with the, the Bitcoin wallet, integrate some code in your payment system, and voila, you can start accepting Bitcoin in your retail store. Another area this is getting enormous attention and why the banks and the hedge funds are 
adopting this whole blockchain Bitcoin technology is we'll, we'll take Africa for example okay so in Africa cash sending receiving is dominated by who Western Union and MoneyGram you can understand the economic plight these people have so there's people all across the world sending money back to their family and friends in Africa do you know what the average transaction cost is for Western Union or MoneyGram 12 percent right I mean people here every penny counts right you know literally a nickel is buying a day's worth of food and they're being charged 12 percent well here with the Bitcoin the transaction costs are soon approaching to be less than one percent that's a big deal I showed you some of these airline stocks and also uh, Expedia and Cheap Air. So the UATP, so th this is the Universal Air Travel Plan, right? So they, they handle, it's a payment network, they handle 260 international airlines. And why do they love it so much? Well, if you think about it, for a pretty high-priced single transaction for most families, it's airfare, and what do most people do? They're using Expedia or Cheap Air trying to find the cheapest fare, right? So if every single penny counts in this, these fare calculations, and you're able to use the Bitcoin with lower fees versus what? Credit cards, right? So the credit card fees are 2 to 3%. So now you know why all the airlines are getting on this digital currency in a big way. So venture capital is flooding into this space in the, the first quarter of 2016. There's already been $160 million uh, going into Bitcoin and related companies. So it's just not Bitcoin related companies. And it, it makes sense, right? So there's a finite supply of Bitcoins. So what that should resonate with you, what does that sound like? Well, that sounds like gold, right? And sure, yes, there's mining, there's additional mining where they're pulling gold out of the ground. But gold moves mostly by supply and demand because of the limited amount of gold. And there's a limited amount of Bitcoin. This is completely contrary to all the, what the central banks are doing with currency, right? The central banks are doing what? They're just printing, right? Printing nonstop. And this is the main reason I believe we need to pay attention to Bitcoin because right before our very eyes, folks, is what I believe to be the blueprint for a cashless society. Now, I know, you know, look, talk is cheap in that area. You hear this stuff all the time. But let, let's just review for a second. This entire series, we just did a nine video series on what? On understanding negative interest rates, right? It started, uh, the big focus was the Bank of Japan. Europe is doing it. So you're still hearing a lot of this stuff. And what, what, what's the example we use about in Japan, right? So if, if there's a bank in Japan, in a normal bank, you put your money in the bank, what do they do? They pay you interest on your money. But in Japan, you put your money in the bank, what do they do? They charge you for having your money in the bank. Why are they doing that? They're doing that because they want you to take your money out of the bank. And what do they want you to do? They want you to buy another currency, mainly the U.S. dollar. Because if you buy the U.S. dollar, that drives the yen, right? It drives the yen which way? Down. The cheaper the yen, the more competitive products are in the world market. Are people doing that? Are the Japanese people doing that? Very limited. What are they doing? And this is driving the central bankers crazy. What are they doing? They're taking large denominated bills and they're putting them in safes in their home. Here's an article in Fortune magazine just a little over a month ago. Negative interest rates are driving up sales of safes. Safes are sold out. You can't get the safe. So you know in the back rooms the central bankers are just pulling their hair out. And you know what? Look, I'm not a big fan of what the central bankers are doing. I think that they are creating much more harm than they are good. But this is just something that's going to continue to drive us to this cashless society. Because if, because if there's one thing the central banks want, they want control. Well, they're trying to control economies with interest rates. They're trying to create inflation where there is no inflation. 
They're trying to control global productivity. And as this continues to not work for them, they're going to take other steps and they're just going to do this. Okay, so that's all about usage. So let's go back up top and talk about what we mentioned in the beginning about it being a digital asset, right? 